Well, uh, Interpol Secretary General Jürgen Stock, Vice Chief of the Defence Force Admiral Griggs, Delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it's my very great pleasure to extend on behalf of the Australian Government a very warm welcome to our nation's capital and to this Parliament. It's wonderful to see over 70 countries and over 300 uh, people attending this very important uh, forum, an impressive gathering to discuss a very important issue. And the Australian Government is privileged uh, to host this inaugural counter-improvised explosive device and counter-terrorism leaders forum on behalf of Interpol. This Parliament makes decisions on whether to use the military dimension of Australia's national power in support of our interests. The troops that respond to those decisions are all too often exposed to risk, and increasingly in recent years, the risk from improvised explosive devices or IEDs. As you consider responses to this threat over the next three days, our parliament is very pleased to host your discussions. As a former 31-year veteran of the Australian Regular Army, uh, I've had plentiful opportunities to see the awful and indiscriminate effects and consequences of IEDs. It's a matter that's uh, very close to my heart. And I know my friend, Defence Minister Kevin Andrews, who is on a, a bilateral uh, visit to India, and all of our colleagues are focused on doing everything we can to support the force protection of our troops and those of our friends and allies. We therefore warmly welcome this inaugural forum, which explores the link between terrorism and IEDs. And it's a link that is an increasingly dangerous one. IEDs are present in approximately 80% of terrorist activity around the globe. Unfortunately, threat actors are employing IEDs in growing numbers around the world, and they are constantly adapting and evolving these weapons. They're being used to threaten the legitimacy, authority, and the rule of law of nations, particularly in developing or post-conflict fragile states. And this trend will continue because IEDs are a low-cost, high-return weapon system that is readily available. As we saw from the introductory video, for $30, a single person can have a strategic effect. It's anticipated that future warfare, including terrorism, will continue to place importance on the use of IEDs. The techniques and knowledge will continue to proliferate, including in our region of the world. A number of our regional neighbours are facing internal threats from IEDs on a daily basis. And I can recall in 2009, while First Assistant Secretary uh, in Defence, um, through our Defence Cooperation Program, assisting the Royal Thai Armed Forces through the provision of bomb sets. And in those days, the IED threat in Thailand was pretty much constrained to, to the southern insurgency. But as we saw on the 17th of August, IEDs now threaten Thailand's biggest city. Australia, as with almost every nation, has been seriously impacted by the use of IEDs or even the threat of IEDs. A single individual with a, a firearm and the threat of a bomb in a backpack was enough to shut down an entire city block in Sydney last December. Terrorist attacks in Australia, in Bali, in London and elsewhere uh, have seen the intentional targeting of innocent civilians who have been killed, maimed and emotionally scarred by these hideous weapons. Australian security and law enforcement agencies have been able to stop a number of imminent terrorist related attacks on Australian soil that included the potential use of IEDs and this response has been enabled through our national security strategy, which provides a framework of national security objectives to combat the terrorists and their indiscriminate use of such weapons. As a member of Parliament's Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security, I'm pleased to say that we've also passed new laws to give our police and security agencies the powers they need to keep us safe. Four solid pieces of legislation in the last 12 months and on Friday we'll be announcing the next uh, committee report in relation to the citizenship legislation that's currently before the Parliament. 
The recent success in thwarting attack planes in Australia demonstrates the value of strong institutional structures and investment to strengthen our diplomacy, defence, border protection, law enforcement and intelligence. Through these connections within Australia's interagency and with like-minded friends and allies, a more effective whole-of-government response to this threat is possible, particularly by sharing information with international partners. The IED threat has been and continues to be the Australian Defence Force's operational environment and is likely to be so for the foreseeable future. We saw in the video um, the Chief of the Defence Force, Mark Binskin, reporting yet another combat casualty, Australian combat casualty, from IEDs. And in recent military operations, 54% of Australian troops killed or wounded have been as a direct result of improvised explosive devices. To ensure that our force protection measures adapt and evolve to the threat, we must continue to invest in this area. Australia, like many nations, has increased its counter-terrorism efforts, and specifically in relation to IEDs. One of the most significant changes has been the permanent establishment of a counter-IED task force within the Australian Defence Force. This task force is an integral component of our counter-IED strategy. The task force is a focal point for collaboration with industry, allies and regional partners. It exchanges information, provides advice and co-develops new technology and training responses. This has helped improve capability for our partners, regional neighbours and ourselves. Australia also continues to be at the cutting edge of defence science and technology improvements needed to address this global threat. One example is the development of an IED de detector by the Australian Defence Science and Technology Group in consultation with industry. The detector combines world-leading Australian detection technology with cutting-edge ground penetrating radar to locate and identify low signature content IEDs in challenging soil conditions. Moreover, under Defence's Red Wing program, Australia has developed low-cost, robust and lightweight force protection systems. The equipment has particular application for use in austere operating environments by military and police units as it requires minimal operator training and limited logistic support. Through this project, the Australian Government has invested up to $50 million in the Australian defence manufacturing industry. This investment demonstrates defence's ability to leverage domestic counter ID technology into jobs for Australians. It's a great example of collaboration between defence and industry and it shows how innovation, entrepreneurship can develop unique solutions to a persistent threat in almost every conflict zone around the world. With defence industry partners supporting an accelerated production schedule, delivery of this vital equipment to Afghanistan commenced in January and has now been entirely delivered. I hear, as I speak to some of our defence colleagues this morning, some wonderful force protection results are resulting from this equipment. The Afghan National Defence and Security Forces are now deploying this equipment in the current fighting season, their first without significant coalition support. Australia stands shoulder to shoulder with worldwide military and law enforcement agencies in the fight against IED proliferation and the disruption of the networks that use them. That's why the initiative to partner with Interpol and the Australian Federal Police to organise and deliver this forum stands as a testament to our resolve. In addition to our own IED experiences and that of other militaries, Australia has observed a global trend of increasing attacks against humanitarian and emergency aid workers, against emergency first responders like medics and ambulances, UN mission members and innocent civilians who suffer most from the indiscriminate effects of IEDs. These people and organisations are often the least prepared and the least protected. That said, the use of IEDs and their connection to terrorism is certainly not new. 
What is apparent, however, are the global connections through the internet which help link terrorist organisations to those individuals we identify as lone wolves. The ability of terrorists to share information through social media and the internet promotes the use and construction of IEDs anywhere at any time. Their intention is to build capability and then decentralise the mayhem and assist the capacity of like-minded groups and individuals by sharing information and supplying precursors, materials and components. These terrorist networks are far-reaching, some even operate under a franchise model. It is apparent that the very things that enable globalisation for the good of mankind can also be the very things that enable global transnational threats to mankind. And just as there is a growing demand for internationalism to meet global threats like pandemics and global warming, an international approach to countering the pandemic of IEDs is also required. To effectively combat this threat, Australia believes that a global network or a global alliance is required to coordinate efforts and share information on counter-ID technologies, on precursor materials and on those who construct and use these weapons. And in targeting the threat, we must focus on the IED enablers, particularly the funders, the developers and the proliferators. As all nations are now under threat from IEDs, all nations are welcome to contribute their experiences and their ideas towards collective solutions. And what that requires is a sustained partnership with law enforcement and across a broad range of political and economic pursuits. Australia acknowledges that global threats can't be prevented just through border controls or the efforts of any single nation. We must work together to get to this problem's roots. To build collective capacity and to use the strong institutional structures in many countries here in this room to strengthen the institutional responses in those countries that need it most. We must also continue to develop a universal narrative to counter the law of the dissidents and the extremists to work against that siren song of transnational ideology, we must affect the terrorists' freedom of action at every opportunity, including by disrupting their established global supply chain. A fundamental objective underpinning this response is to establish and maintain the mechanisms for greater information sharing and collaboration. Now, it is appreciated that there is a high level of sensitivity about IED information and historically an apprehension to share it. This represents an issue of trust and perhaps the single greatest challenge facing any global effort. But it is a challenge which we must discuss and it must be resolved if we are to defeat this threat. As the opening video said, and I quote, by working together, by drawing on each other's experiences, the global counter-ID community can tackle this threat together. Perhaps the most important message that I would like to deliver and convey to this forum is the necessity to focus on the very thing that terrorist networks have relied upon, and that is the sharing of information. Our weakness has become their strength, and that must be reversed. Australia acknowledges that other nations, organisations and alliances are already working together and working hard on this issue, as are we. To name a few things that are happening, NATO through its alliance and the Counter-IED Centre of Excellence in Spain. The United Nations with its efforts to address the IED threat under Protocol 2 of the Conve Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons and of course UN Resolution 2178 which recognises Interpol in its global role against foreign terrorist fighters. Additionally, the African Union has developed programs for peace and stability. Within Australia, the efforts of the Australian Federal Police, through its sponsorship of the Southeast Asia Bomb Data Working Group, International Bomb Data Centre affiliations, and its own regional training efforts, 
has contributed to addressing improvised explosive devices within our region. But it would be remiss of me not to make special mention of Interpol. As the world's largest police organisation, its 190 member nations represented here today by the Secretary General and by the representatives from so many of its member nations plays a vital role. Interpol has a unique ability to facilitate international police cooperation. Policemen, like soldiers, can develop relationships across borders, which often endure when other aspects of the bilateral and multilateral relationship may not be strong or may be tested. Our uniform diplomacy and the comradeship on which it is based can be particularly valuable in strengthening counter-ID cooperation. As already mentioned, UN Resolution 2178 acknowledges Interpol's vital role in preventing the international travel of foreign fighters, including the use of Interpol's stolen and lost travel documents database, as well as iCheckIt. As a screening measure, iCheckIt has enabled companies in the transport, banking and tourism industries to submit passport information for screening against the Interpol database, which contains more than 43 million records from 167 countries. It is also noteworthy that Interpol, through the National Central Bureau, has formed a dedicated foreign uh, terrorist fighter program in partnership with the US National Security Council, Department of Justice and Department of Homeland Security. These exemplars demonstrate that where there is a willingness to address this global issue, a coalition of the willing can be formed. And so this forum will do good work in examining the current global effort. It will help identify current communities of action, identify mechanisms to promote collaboration between them, and where possible to establish alliances beyond those already established in order to develop a greater unity of purpose to defeat the scourge of IEDs. This Leaders Forum presents a unique opportunity in bringing together key leaders from government, law enforcement and the military to enhance counter-ID relationships between nations and institutions. It provides the platform to develop action plans and to bridge information gaps between military and law enforcement. The forum offers the opportunity to bring the global counter-ID community closer together, and it's anticipated that this forum will agree to the establishment of ongoing programs of work designed to enable the military, government, and law enforcement agencies to more effectively and efficiently combat this threat. It will also provide the Government of Australia insights on how we might further develop our counter-ID and national security objectives. These objectives will always encompass consideration of how Australia can contribute best to a truly global counter-ID effort. The Australian Government seeks to ensure that this forum is only the first step towards establishing a stronger, more focused and enduring global counter-ID network one that is designed to increase awareness, share information and promote cooperation to enhance public safety both here and overseas. Australia looks forward to participating fully over the next three days because if we ignore the global ID problem today, we can sign future generations to the threat of even more sophisticated, globally active ID networks tomorrow. That's why, in a busy and demanding world, I thank you again for taking the time to attend this forum.